we're going to talk about transformations in the coordinate plane. And part of this has to do with the coordinate plane, but more, more importantly, perhaps, is how we're going to use this to manipulate figures and move things around. And so we're going to talk about transformations in the coordinate plane. First, let's lay out some of the basics, some of the vocabulary. A transformation is a change in the position, size, or shape of a figure. Notice there are three different things that can happen. Position, position, size, or shape. We are particularly going to talk about position today. The pre-image, before we move. Okay, before we move it. It's the pre-image, the pre-move. The image then is gonna be the end resulting figure of the transformation. So after we do the transformation, this is what we get. So this is going to be after. after the transformation. Now, a lot of us think of transformation as something necessarily needing to change shape. But if we change position, that's also a transformation. And so, some more of the basics. A transformation maps the image to the pre-image. Okay? So, we're gonna signal this with an arrow. Signal change. Okay, so the arrow is going to tell us that we're mapping it. And arrow notation is used to describe the transformation. What does this look like? Well, we might say A, B, C goes to A prime, B prime, C prime. Okay, primes are used to label the images or the image. Okay, so A prime, B prime, C prime tells us that the figure has been moved once. Okay, so a single prime tells us it's been moved one time. Okay, it's been moved one time. And so double prime, triple prime, et cetera, et cetera. But this tells us that it's been moved. Okay, so arrow notation shows us that it's going from a, B, C to A prime, B prime, C prime, and that tells us that it's been moved a single time, okay? More basic stuff before we get there. We're gonna put these in our note card. You should draw these pictures in this first one. If you wanna go ahead and pause, that would be perfectly fine. I'm gonna go ahead and keep on going through, but if you need to pause to draw these pictures, please feel free to do that. In this first one, notice this arrow tells us that we're gonna be moving up this way, and so what we're gonna call this is a rotation. Or a turn because it's turning about this radius. Okay, this is called our center of rotation. Because notice, where is it rotating around? It's rotating around this little point. Okay, the second one is going to be a reflection. or a flip, okay? It's flipping over this line here. And notice, it is the same distance from C to the line as C prime to the line, okay? So, and this is called the line of reflection. Okay, the line of reflection. Because it's the line that we're reflecting across. Okay, it makes sense if you think about it. Okay, so pretty much intuitive stuff. We are reflecting over a line. Okay, this last one is called a translation. Okay, or a slide. Notice we're sliding it up like a checker, okay? So, it's like it's just moving it across the table, sliding something across the table. That's exactly what that would be like, okay? And so these are the three basic premises that we're gonna use to describe these transformations in this section. So when we look at the actual definitions, should you write these down? 
I think there's some useful information in here. I think if you've drawn the pictures and done your due diligence as far as what it means to do these certain things, you don't necessarily have to, but it might be good for you to write down. I would make sure that you have this piece of information here because it is going to be hugely crucial for you to know this and to understand it. It's equal distance from the line in a reflection. Okay. hugely crucial to know this part here okay I'm just outlining some of the basic information I think you definitely need to know right here they move the same distance in the same direction with the slide okay and so these these pieces of information yes I think they're useful for you to write down but I think you should definitely definitely have these pieces of information in yellow down somewhere on your paper okay so you can pause there and finish that up I'm going to keep going Identifying transformations. I need to draw you a picture because we are going to be looking at a figure here. That's going to look something like this. Okay, it's going to be a triangle. So I'm going to erase that little tail over there, clean it up a bit, and we're going to go E, F, and G. And in my next picture, We're going to go something like that. And I'm going to label my vertices G prime, E prime, F prime. And what it's saying is identify the transformation. What kind of transformation is it? Well, let's look. You have three choices. Is it turning? Is it sliding? Or is it flipping? Is it translating? Is it rotating? Or is it translation, rotation, and reflection okay so we're, we're talking about are we flipping here are we rotating are we sliding well if we notice what what is going on with a triangle it's a little bit tough sometimes unless we note the notation because look at where G is in the first one and look at where G is in the second one does G slide the same relative distance as F well F starts out here and it goes all the way over here so obviously we see that there's this line here that is allowing us to reflect. So this would be a reflection, also known as a flip, because it's been flipped over on itself, okay? Now we're gonna use arrow notation. We are taking E, F, G, the triangle, and we are moving it, transforming it, and it is becoming E prime, F prime, G prime. Okay, see how that happens? This is arrow notation. So here are the two parts of my answer. I'm gonna circle them. Here's the first part. Here's the second part. You can include the flip if you would like, okay? So that's us identifying a transformation, okay? So remember, your three choices, reflection, rotation, translation. All right, the next part. Moving into the coordinate plane. A figure has vertices at A, B, and C. After the transformation, the image of that figure has different vertices, A, B, and C okay and so when we are looking at this we are going to be taking a different a different approach to this we're going to be using the graph to kind of show us first of all I need to make a little bit of a change here this is going to be okay the the vertices are correct so let's look at where this thing goes I'm going to start in red and so just for clarity's sake I'm going to, I'm going to put these in red here to show you what's going on so if a is at negative one four a is going to be there. Okay. B is going to be at negative 1, 1. And C is going to be at 3, 1 here. Okay. So I've got my joyful triangle here. And for clarity's sake, once again, I'm going to outline the second part in blue. All right. And I'm going to see where they go. So A is now at negative 1, negative 4. So that becomes a prime. Very crucial to get those primes in there. B is at negative one, one. And C is at three, negative one. So when I draw this, I think it becomes abundantly clear that when we say draw the pre-image and the image, so this would be the pre-image, that's right. 
because it's before we move it. Notice we start out there, and after we move it, this is the image because it's got our primes, and I've forgotten a couple of them. Hopefully some of you out there caught that. Okay, so A prime, B prime, C prime is the image. Now, I'm gonna say A, B, C, arrow. So it transforms into A prime, B prime, C prime. And we are going to call this what kind of transformation? Is it a rotation? Is it a translation? Or is it a reflection? You can see that it is a reflection. Okay? A, B, C to A prime, B prime, C prime is a reflection. Okay? Here's one for you to do. You can try this one. I'm not going to pause. I'm going to keep going through. But if you want to pause, you can certainly go ahead and do that. Once again, I'm going to outline my pre-image in one color. So E is at 2, 0. F is at 2, negative 1. G is at 5, negative 1. And H is at 5, 0. So I've got myself a rectangle here. And if I look in a different color, I'm going to take E prime, F prime, G prime, H prime, and put those somewhere else. So E prime is at 0, 2. We're being sure to label with our primes. F prime is at 1, 2. I put that on the wrong side, I suppose. So F prime goes here. And G prime is at 1, 5. And H prime is at 0, 5. Okay, notice, I've done my due diligence. I have labeled, I'm not drawing very effectively, but I've labeled. Okay, what has happened from the pre-image to the image? Once again, this is our pre-image. And this is our image. And so my transformation looks like this. I go from E, F, G, H to E prime, F prime, G prime, H prime. What happened from there to there? Is it a rotation? Is it a reflection? Or is it a translation? Okay. We're going to say that because it rotates up like so, this is going to be a rotation. Okay. That's how it works. How do we notate these things? How to talk about translations. Now notice, this is not transformations, this is translations. And the way that we do this is we say, we take our original XY. Our original points start out like this. And then we transform them and we say X plus a certain amount and then we do y plus a certain amount. Okay, so this describes how the coordinates change. Okay, this describes how the coordinates change. So it tells us we're adding a certain amount to each x and a certain amount to each y. And so that's going to help us when we do something like this when we, when we translate something, okay? So we're gonna find the coordinates for the image of triangle ABC after the translation, x plus y is x plus three, y minus four. We're doing that to each one of them. And so what I need to do is I need to say, okay, I'm adding three to x and subtract four from y, okay? So when I look at A, I am going to go forward three, one, two, three, and down four, one, two, three, four. Here is my A prime. Over three, down four. Over three right, down four. I'm gonna do that to each subsequent point. So one, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. 
One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And when I get done, my triangle should look a lot the same, but should be shifted, okay? So my points, I'm simply doing to them exactly what it says in the parentheses. It tells me to go down or over three and down four. Last example. See if you can do this one on your own. I'm going to keep ro rolling, th rolling through and go ahead and do it. So I'm going to go left two, up four. So I go one, two, one, two, three, four. And this is going to be J prime. One, two, one, two, three, four. This is going to be K prime. One, two, one, two, three, four. It's going to be L prime. You just have to remember where you started. One, two, one, two, three, four. And this is going to be M prime. Connect the dots. And we're good to go. You see how that worked. Okay? So I drew the image. The pre-image was already there. And this is the image. This is the pre-image. Okay? That's it for today, guys. Go ahead and watch this video again if you need to. Go through it. Take notes. And we will see you tomorrow.